Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday service. Today is January 30th, 2022. And tonight we are going to talk about how to take over payments via subject to. This is a really quick answer. In fact, I could probably answer this in three minutes and satisfy most people, but we're going to go longer. We're going to make sure that it's um, deep dove into and we answer the question for people of how to actually take over payments subject to so that we can get past this topic, never talk about it again, and go on to other topics that actually are super, super important. Uh, tonight on our episode of Sunday Service, we will be giving away an iPhone. Cody doesn't know this, but I'm taking it out of his paycheck. And we're going to be giving one lucky person an iPhone tonight at the end of the show. Um, I, I had this compelling feeling when um, Jamari sold us this deal in Atlanta recently, and he's a Green Bumble Gang. And I'm like, yo, dude, um, I can't be doing deals with the Green Bumble Gang. I can't voice memo you. He's like, oh, well, you know, it's Android users. Their answer for everything is like, well, there's an app for that. Just download the app and then you can do it. I'm like, bro, I ain't going to buy a phone to download an app to do something that other phone does just normal. So let's freaking get you an iPhone. So I'm buying him an iPhone on top of the assignment fee he's getting. And in the same thought process, I go, you know what? Cody and I have had such a good run with Sunday service. Let's give away an iPhone to our users tonight, our audience tonight. And um, we're not talking about one of them um, old iPhones. We're talking about the brand new iPhone 13. Okay, so we'll be talking about that at the end of the show. There's Jamari. He knows I'm talking a little trash about that green <laughs> bubble gang. Uh, Robin oh, Hurt says, man. what? An iPhone giveaway? She's an, she's an Android user. Uh, Ingrid, I tease her about being an Android user for so long. She went out and bought an iPhone. So she's like, why didn't I wait for this? Um, oh so God. tonight guys, we're going to talk about probably about how to create or how to take over subject to payments. I'd say for 20, 30 minutes, and then we'll open it up to some good Q and a talk about some things that Cody and I are working on. Um, Cody, if somebody asks you right now, how do you physically make the payments on a subject to deal what is a couple of different ways you could do that okay um the first way is you can hire a servicing company to do that so when you purchase the property and the loan that's already there you can hire an a third party company called a servicing company that they basically handle all of the paperwork as far as you know, you say, hey, this is the property. This is the seller. I am the buyer. Here are all the different payments that have to be made. They're going to essentially just handle that, uh, you know, those payments being made every month where you pay the servicer. The servicer is then going to disperse those payments to the lender that's taking those payments. So that's, I mean, that's one of the simple ways, one of the really good ways uh, to do it and how we typically set up ours. Um, another thing that people can do is, Typically, because we are in the 21st century, uh, most sellers have a portal online where they can log into their account on uh, online and be able to go in and make the payments directly on there. Um, and you can just get the login for that and be able to go in directly and make the payments that way as well. That's another way that you can do it. Okay, so this one's pretty simple. I'm going to pull up a servicing arrangement from a deal we had a couple of years ago with uh, Carrie Persons from... Magnus. So Perfect. here you guys go. Uh, home key servicing is one of probably 15,000 servicing companies out there. Um, we ended up using, I don't know, we probably have 10 different servicing companies between all of our deals because sometimes the servicing company will be suggested to you by the title company who's closing the transaction. They'll go, hey, we, we really like home key servicing. And so we'll set up this paperwork, right? Answers all this qu these questions and it goes on and on. You submit it to HomeKey. And then essentially what HomeKey does is HomeKey does something pretty magical. Check this out. For any of you uh, that don't know the answer to this, but let me show this to you real quick. Let me do uh, full screen for me. Cody is eating some sort of uh, tasty treat. So let's let him enjoy that tasty treat for just a second. Okay. All right. So on a service with a servicing company, let's say I buy a house. Actually, I've got a really good one. Ooh, this is really good. I've got a house on Willow Way in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. 
This is a really good one. A lot of people don't know this, but Cody and I have got a deal in in Atlanta. Will away has one loan is a sub two deal. A second loan is sub two. A third loan is sub two. A fourth loan is seller finance. And the fifth loan is a private money lender. So there's actually oh my five God. loans. Yeah. So let me pull this up because this is really, really good for a lot of people to see. When you look at a, a settlement statement or a HUD, let's look at Will Away um, final documents so you guys can see this. It's very cool. It's kind of funny to see this particular deal because it's like, wait, what? How, how, many, how many deals are there? Um, all right, let's turn this sideways so you guys can see this. Ooh, it's so good. Let's share this. Do you guys enjoy it when we share our screen and we actually show you real stuff that most people would never even have to show you? So check this out, line 507. Can you see this okay, Cody? I can see it better now. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so subject to loan from Penny Mac, subject to loan from HUD, subject to loan Johnny Marshall. Three subject to loans. Okay. Then we ended up creating a um, seller finance note as well on top of that. And then we also ended up getting a private money lender to come in and pay for, um, this was, this turned into an Airbnb. So a private money lender came in, paid for the furniture, the closing costs, all that kind of stuff. So this is a lot, right? This is a freaking lot to pay out. So a lot of people go, well, how are you making these payments? Cause this one is to Penny Mac. This one's to HUD. This is to a private um, lender. This is to the seller, uh, seller finance note. It's a lot, right? So essentially here's what happens. We have a bank account and the servicing company takes out roughly, they deduct from our account $2,400 a month. And they take that money and they disperse that money to one, two, three, four, five different people because there are five different loans on this. And they also, on top of that, disperse that to six and seven taxes and insurance because none of the taxes and insurance are escrowed on this deal. There are people in this live right now that are like, wait, what? What does that mean? Tax, escrow and, and taxes, insurance, not escrowed? I, don't, I have no idea what that means. Guys, that's another topic for another day if you don't understand that. But the servicing company is who actually makes all these payments for us. So they log into the portal um, on the seller's um, old mortgage. Sorry, the seller's current mortgage. The old seller's current mortgage. They log in. They make the payment. They send out an email. And then we get an email every single month based on the payments that are being made. Let me pull one up and so you guys can kind of see what these look like. Let's see. I think the people that are the best at, at least the ones that show up, I'm, I'm unfortunate. I don't get a lot of the, I don't get a lot of the servicing emails because you guys keep all the fun stuff for me. So I just have to like, I'm lucky on some of the stuff. So check this out guys. <laughs> You'll see, um, West star customer service, August 3rd, 2021, making a payment. It breaks down like principal amount, borrower fees, all that kind of stuff. And you'll see who's being notified, right? So our bookkeepers being notified, the sellers being notified, all that kind of stuff. That is what a servicing company does. And you get that report every single month on properties that you have serviced. So there are so many amazing things about servicing a property above and beyond just keeping things organized and making sure the payments are being made. But essentially what a servicing company does is they take the money out of your bank account every month and they make sure that every single loan that you have taken over subject to, even that crazy hairy one on Will Away, are all taken care of, all reported. Everybody gets emails. Everybody gets notified. The seller gets notified when their payments get made. All of that kind of stuff. Um, Mike says, how did you get that deal? What was the, uh, what was the rehab to get it ready for Airbnb? Um, the, that deal came from one of our students. <coughs> Jeremy Gonzalez actually sold us that deal. Um, and it cost, I think, about 15 grand to get the Airbnb up and going. How much does a servicing company typically charge, Cody? I mean, de depending on the different things that you're having them do, $10, $15 a month. 
if they're servicing multiple notes, they could charge a little bit more. I, I mean, it depends is the real answer. It depends on the company, the services that they're offering for you, but 10, 15 bucks a month generally. Right. So um, when you get a really complex deal like that one on Will Away, it can get rather expensive. It can get all the way up to uh, kind of crazy. It can get up to like $37, almost unaffordable. <laughs> Guys, it's incredibly affordable. Use a servicing company to take care of these payments for you. And so um, there's a couple of reasons why you should use a servicing company. We'll give you other ways that you can take over payments and how the payments get made and all that kind of stuff in just a moment. But multiple reasons why you should use a servicing company. One, it keeps the seller up to date. Two, it keeps your records organized. Three, when you go to refinance or you go to seller finance or you go to do something with the property, the servicing company is a really great um, tool to leverage for all the documentation, all the paperwork, et cetera, making sure that it's kind of like servicing your vehicle every single month and keeping all your receipts so that when you go sell your, your truck and you go, oh yeah, I've taken great care of it. It's like, have you really? Yes. Here's all the receipts of all my servicing and all the parts I've purchased and every little docu piece of docu documentation. You're going to feel super comfortable buying that deal. And it's the same thing when you have a property being serviced by a licensed servicing company, you feel super comfortable taking over a deal um, or you have benefits of refinancing. Here's a really great one. If you buy a property subject to and you are servicing it and then you sell that on a lease option and you service the lease option as well with the servicing company, your lease option tenant actually can refinance that property not have to go and do an initial purchase. And the reason being is because you're servicing and showing um, the, a future lender that that lease option tenant is actually making their payments. It's very, very cool. So Cody, besides a servicing company, which is pretty obvious benefit, what's yeah. another way that you can make a payment on somebody else's subject to loan? I mean, the times that we haven't serviced the property um, for one reason or another, um, you know, being able to just get their online portal, because like like I was saying earlier, um, for those of you that are, you know, just hopped on uh, most mortgages, most mortgage companies are going to provide some sort of online portal uh, where you're going to be able to log in there, be able to change who's making the payments directly on there. Um, like I know, for example, the personal house that I used to live in on McClellan Road. When I bought that subject to, uh, all I had to do was just log into their portal. I changed it from the uh, it drafting from the previous seller's account directly from my account and set up auto pay. And that was, that was about it. And that it was very simple. Yeah. Uh, Medium Wave Dave, good friend of ours, says, um, so you can essentially season your lease option tenant to qualify for a refinance to cash you out instead of applying for a purchase mortgage. That is correct. Now, that's a whole nother conversation, Dave. Do you think I really want to allow my tenant to have um, servicing? No, because um, I'm a shrewd real estate investor. I want to make it as legal and awesome as possible for the lease option tenant to go and buy that property from us at some point, but we're not going to assist them. Do you know how good that microphone is, bro? We could not hear you sneeze. I muted myself. Oh, I was like, dang it. That <laughs> microphone is so amazing. But um, so the um, lease option tenant, I don't want to assist them in trying to buy the property from us. That's their responsibility. So I don't necessarily want the uh, tenant to have that, but there have been tenants in the past that go, can I have my lease option payments go against my credit to improve my credit? And the answer is yes. As long as you have it serviced through a servicing company that will report it that way, the answer is yes, you can. Um, Sam Singh says his mic is notoriously bad. I have heard stories. Okay, so um, Xavier says, newly licensed broker in Yamhill County, Oregon, would love to team up with sub two student. Nothing but uh, time to be a sponge for knowledge and willing to provide value in any way. Um, we got a lot of students in, in uh, the or Oregon area, so look out for them. Uh, Carolina and Stephen Allen are there. Um, Munif says, you don't want the tenant to have equitable interest. That is correct. We don't want the, the tenant to have such an easy time to buy. Every time we did a lease option, I now look back and I'm like, why did we do that? 
at the time we thought it was smart. How much money do you think yeah, we like, lost on our lease options? We made obviously we made a ton of money, but how much did we leave on the table? A I mean, hundreds bucks? of thousands. Yeah, I mean, probably close to a million dollars at this point. I'm Fun. just thankful that one of our lease options that we would have had like two hundred thousand dollars in equity loss. They're actually not going to buy it and they're going to be moving out, which is great. Ooh, which one? <laughs> let me guess. Let me guess. Called, um, Maui. No, it was Colorado. Oh, they're there. That was a we sold that on a lease option. Yeah. This is why you don't sell on lease options anymore. We just don't. I mean, we had so many people execute on our lease options. It's ridiculous. Colorado, we yeah. that was a two hundred dollars. We would have left two hundred thousand dollars on the table if we had they had executed that option. Yeah. Do you know why they are not executing their option? Well, this it's the second time within the last like eight months, nine months since they you know we had to file an eviction like nine months ago, and then they you know figured it out to stay, and then now this is the second time, and it's just like you know it's just not going to work out. So they're just going to be moving out. Wow. Family, family issues, family drama. So someone that was a provider left and can't help pay. So that that sort of how thing. much did they give us um, on the lease option fee three years ago when we bought that? Uh, I think it was like five or six grand. So we got five or six grand as a lease option fee. Mm -hmm. They probably paid an elevated rent for that whole time frame, which was great. And then here we are three years later. They're not executing the option. We've made two hundred thousand dollars above and beyond, and this is the one that we're going to turn into a to building Airbnb. Yep. Yep. Mm. Um, Cal says, Pace, you're a Gatorade guy. Yeah, I love Gatorade Zero. I don't know what it is, but uh, the TV show, they give it to us all the time on set, it's and so I just kind of got used to it. Um, we, when is a lease option smart? This, I have a good answer for this one, Cody. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. When you're brand new and you're starting out and you need a little bit extra bump in cash, a lease option is a smart way to go just to get you hobbling and getting you moving forward in the game. But past that, I would suggest never do do a lease option. Yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, people can argue on a lease option that you're not doing as much maintenance because you're not having to take care of the repairs because most of the time part of that option agreement is that the resident living in the property, they're going to be the one taking care of the repairs. So there is that benefit. But again, there's, you know, if the market as it continues to increase, obviously it can decrease, but as it continues to, de you know, increase, you're leaving money on the table a lot of times. And like Pace was saying that you typically are getting a, an option fee upfront. Um, generally, you're seeing option fees at three grand, five grand, eight to 10 grand typically. So you can put that extra money in your pocket and just give you some more capital to be able to spend on marketing to go and get more deals. I mean, that that's really the, the only reason I see those really making that much sense. Yeah. the um, When you're first starting out, somebody asked a really good question. Um, so Austin Klinger, when you're kind of starting out, there's a, there's a phaseology that I tell my students, um, in sub two, here's the phaseology that I would follow if I was brand new in this business. Um, phase number one is if I'm just starting out in creative finance, the first thing I want to do is I want to wholesale my deals. Okay. So I want to wholesale like Jamari, um, the other day made $10,000 assigning a deal to us and we paid retail. We literally paid retail for an, a deal in Atlanta um, subject to, we broke this deal down and we will break it, break it down, give the, the address away at some point in the future. And Jamari is not a sub two student. He's just a wholesaler that has never done a sub two deal before. And he goes and knocks on this seller's house in Atlanta and gives me the lead. I lock up the, the lady in a contract and I'm paying him $10,000 and an iPhone um, because I never want to text him in a green, green bubble text message ever again. And I plan on doing a lot of deals with Jamari. So when you first start out, you can wholesale sub two and wholesale seller finance opportunities. A lot of people don't uh, pay attention to that. They think, oh, I'm doing creative finance. I have to buy the properties. Nope, you don't. I have more students assigning wholesale or I have a, more students wholesaling sub two and seller finance than um, are taking them down because it takes three to six to nine months to start building cap capital to go out and do that, or even the reputation to raise capital. 
So you start out by wholesaling and assigning subject to and seller finance deals. The next thing you want to do is you want to start wrapping a couple of deals or you buy them subject to and you sell them on seller finance. And the reason why you want to do this is because um, on a wrap situation, your buyer will typically bring your a, a large enough down payment to the table to cover your down payment to get into the deal. It's another, another conversation from another day. It probably went over most people's heads. And then um, lease options. As you decide, I am okay with managing properties, you then start going into management um, and doing lease options. Four, I would say that you're going to start doing some Airbnb because um, they cost a little bit more money to get them up and operational. And then number five, I would say um, is long-term just rentals. They're boring, but this is where most of your wealth is going to be built right here is your Airbnbs owning the properties, long-term rentals, Airbnbs. Those are where you're going to make all your wealth. I mean, we made in all of our businesses last year, we have a couple of really successful businesses. We, most of our money and most of our wealth was grown from last year's appreciation on our existing properties we own. So at some point, the main thing that you really want to do is you want to just own property. That's how you become worth $100 million, $200 million, $300 million, $400 million. You're not going to get there by wholesaling. In fact, I don't, I'd be surprised if there's actually somebody that's in wholesale, just wholesale, that actually has a net worth of a million dollars. I'd be surprised. Like I'd be blown away, actually. Um, Terry says, is your stream blurry? Um, is that on my end? Don't worry, Terry. We're going to be giving away an iPhone tonight. Your Android is probably just has something going on or maybe it's just a standard Android. <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure. Um, is it smart to, sh uh, to own a servicing company? Will you um, buy one? Yeah, Cody and I are currently working on that right now. We have a great relationship with somebody that we're collaborating with. Um, Oh, so many good things that we've got working on behind the scenes. Yes, we plan on owning a nationwide servicing company at some point in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, how do you organize this with, with the seller? Does title take care of the mechanics once the subject to is on contract? That is correct. So the title company, a lot of times, um, the title company that we're using for the Jamari deal in Atlanta, yes, they do handle uh, the majority of everything. The paperwork is done by us and our attorney. Um, and the... Uh, the closing attorney and the title company, depending on what state you're in, they are the ones that take everything to the end zone. Um, okay, Cody, let's see here. Ooh, here we go. Ask the, answer this one for us. How come when you buy from wholesalers, you can buy sub two, but when I try, it's cash only? Well, typically the deals that are being brought to Pace and myself, they're usually cash deals that don't work as cash, but the seller's open to other options. That's that's the reason why. It's not that wholesalers typically, not to say this doesn't happen, but typically wholesalers aren't locking up deals that are ARVs 300, they're buying it at 310 and trying to sell it to someone, sell it to us for 320. It's typically, they have a deal that's a little bit too tight to be able to wholesale it cash, but the seller is open to some other options creatively to be able to get that property sold still. And it gets converted typically into uh, a seller carry or subject to transaction. Um, and if Pace, if you have any insight on that as well, I mean, that's typically what I'm seeing. Well, the, the, I do have some big insight on this. I mean, you and I do buy a lot of deals from wholesalers cash, right? So like- yep. Let's pull this up. I'll show you guys. Again, we're all about transparency and honesty on this show. So if you guys look at this Slack channel, you will see all these active projects going on. Sandstone. Is that one done? Yeah, it's it's being uh, interesting that we being listed that this pile. week. Interesting. That's what that's what uh, Anna and Molly picked out together. Okay, cool. Um, all right, looks good. Clean. It's list. It's getting listed this week. Yeah. How much do you think we'll make on this? Probably like fifty grand, forty grand. Wow. Okay, so this one Laura found, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay, so Laura found this one from where, Cody? A wholesaler, right? A wholesaler. So, guys, we buy deals. Look at this deal right here, two forty six South Sandstone. Our team fix and flip this property. Who's our lender on this, by the way? 
Uh, this, myinvestorloan.com. And um, do we have a gap lender on this? We do. We have a private lender that did the gap funding. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So let's see here. Oh, Lemon Street. This is a great one. This is an Airbnb that came from a wholesaler. That was a cash deal. Val Vista yep. Dry. Oh, that's our that's office. That's our office. <laughs> um, okay. Conestoga. Where'd Conestoga come from? We bought that from Frank West. A wholesaler, basically. Yep. So guys, we buy, we do buy a lot of cash deals from a lot of wholesalers. Okay. Um, it's absolutely part of our, um, our strategy is to buy cash deals from wholesalers. We buy deals from anywhere we can. However, um, what, Ooh, Cody, what's gap lending? Ooh, I like that. Uh, Horacio. So gap lending is typically just the gap of whatever funds are needed, either for a down payment for the property or, the renovations of the property, or it could be a little bit of a mixture of both on that. It's just anything that's required to get in either into the deal and or getting the property renovated and getting the project done typically is what that gap lending is used for, how we yeah. use it in our business. The, the word gap is very, very literal. Okay. There's a gap. So let's say that I go to Cody and I use my investor loan. We used to use a different company for a long time, but Co let's say Cody and I use myinvestorloan.com and the rate in which we get, let's say our app, what would you say our average purchase price is on a cash deal, Cody? Like uh, right now, I mean, I would say probably like 350 just because okay, prices so have gone up. 350. We have a company called my investor loan. We do not own this company, myinvestorloan.com. This is where we get all of our rehab money. We get a lot of our long-term burr money. So we, a lot of times, guys, we don't talk about the burr strategy. I don't like talking about the burr strategy because it doesn't really help a lot of newbies. Burr strategy is not for new people. Um, myinvestorloan.com gives us, now I'm not saying they'll give you 90%, but we have a track history. So they give us 90%. So how much money is 90% of $350,000, Cody? Um, well, $335,000 is the 10%. So, okay. Oh, uh, look at you. What are you super smart? So my investor loan will <laughs> give us 315,000. <laughs> Perfect. So we can get $315,000 as a loan from my investor loan.com. Okay. And they're typically, I don't know where we're at. We're nine to 10% somewhere in there for that money. Well, yeah. guess what, Horacio? I'm missing $35,000. Plus, I'm missing my um, closing costs, let's say $5,000. So this gap yep. that I'm missing, this gap, we go and get a secondary lender. And typically, this is a private money lender that's an individual. Okay, so that private money lender will give us $40,000 on this deal to fill in the gap so that we truly buy this deal with no money out of pocket. Okay. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but we truly do buy a lot of deal. Actually, all of our deals are no money out of our pocket. Are we funding really any of our own deals right now? I mean, occasionally, just you or I will just lend on them just to park some of our personal cash and get a return on it. But generally, outside of that, no. Okay, cool. So that's what a gap lender is. That's a great question. Um Here's a good question. Anthony Sellers. So would the wholesaler set up the creative terms or who structures the creative side? So Anthony, we're going to be bringing on Jamari, who is out of Atlanta, just did a deal with him out of Atlanta. I prefer you to never structure my seller finance and subject to deals. I just want your dead leads. And it's the same thing with the sub two students that are in the side chat. If you're a wholesaler, don't join the sub two mentorship. Okay. Don't join the sub two mentorship. What you should be doing is creating friends in the side chat with existing sub two students and bringing your dead leads to them and letting them handle the conversations with the sellers and then pay you a fee. Okay. Now, sometimes that fee is 500 bucks. Depends on the deal. Sometimes it's Cody and I have paid as high as an $80,000 assignment fee on a subject two deal. It depends on the deal. But we prefer to structure and talk to the seller ourselves. I don't want to necessarily buy a deal from you as a wholesaler that are not educated on how to talk to a seller. Definitely, you don't know how to do the paperwork. I can tell you right now, yeah, no. you're, the paperwork you're going to put together is so bad 
you probably went on like one of our friends websites like Jerry Norton's website or Brent Daniels website and you got a wholesale contract and you're going to go and try and buy a subject to deal with a wholesale contract thinking, oh, this is great. I can assign it. You need a specific set of contracts and a specific set of addendum. So absolutely not. I do not want you to ever sell me a deal. I know when some, a wholesaler goes, hey, Pace, I've got a sub two deal. I go, perfect. Let me talk to the seller. And they're like, oh, I already got it under contract. I go, great. Let me talk to the seller. <laughs> Cause I already know you've messed up the paperwork. I got to go unravel what you've done wrong. And I've got, we've got to fix an, an open title with a company that actually knows what they're doing. So for us, I prefer to have you send us leads and opportunities that you don't have the capability of closing. It's more fun that way. And then I'll set like, ask Jamari. I shared the seller call with Jamari after I closed his seller so that he could go back and go, Oh, I learned what pay said and how he did it and what, what the goal is and all that kind of stuff. Bring us those opportunities. Bring us the dead leads and we'll help you guys close those. Um, by the way, guys, thank you. 500 people showing up to Sunday service means a lot. Um, we're going to go an hour tonight. And then at the top of the hour in 29 minutes, Cody and I are going to give away an iPhone to one lucky person in this group. And um, just stick around for that in 29 minutes. It'll be a fun time. I really want to get rid. I think Jared Frankham still has an Android. I really hope he wins the, the contest. Um, yeah, my wife is in here. So thank you so much, Laura. I appreciate that. Um, Cody, where do I get gap lending? Oh my God. I mean, you're, maybe go you're watch last week's Sunday service where we actually called one of our gap lenders live on the show. Yes, that's, that's it. Give homework. We're not going to give you the answer. You got to go listen to last week's cause we literally talk about specifically how we got funding especially when we didn't have all of the connections immediately to go and just get lenders from, you know, friends and family, but from people outside of your friends and family. Cause I know most people are like, everyone I know doesn't have any money to lend me. So I would say, yes, go listen to last week's Sunday service. Cause we tell you exactly how to do it. Yeah, there you go. I like that when we, and we called, um, what's the typical interest paid on gap lending, Cody? Typical for us or typical for someone? Um, I mean, typical for, for us, eight to ten percent. Typically, we're eight to ten percent. Some of our seasoned lenders that we've had for a really long time, we have really good relationships with. Maybe we pay a little bit more, um, but eight to ten percent is pretty pretty standard. Love it. Um, Giancarlo has asked this question about twenty-two times. It's very important for him that we answer this, and so we're going to jump on it. Thank you, John Giancarlo, for All being right. consistent and persistent. Consistent. Seller is willing to sell me his property sub two. He wants to move to Tampa. Is there a period of time he has to wait before he can get another mortgage there? No, he can get a mortgage immediately. Um, Giancarlo, this is a question that if you were a sub two student, you would have already known the answer. Um, you want to make sure. You want to make sure that you know exactly how to do this. It's a very awesome technique. Um, Cody and I have done this so many times. Let me actually pull this up. If you guys are a sub two student, um, let's see, debt to income. I made a post a couple of days ago. Okay. And all right. Yeah, there it is. I actually made the post yesterday at 1230. Let's do a little screen share here. Um, share. Why, oops, my bad. Stop screen share. While share. you're pulling that up, I guess the playoffs were tonight. I didn't know that, but playoffs thanks for everybody for football thanks for joining us guys instead of oh. watching whatever football game is on right now cody and i are real men we're sportsmen guys sportsmen <laughs> we care about sports okay so um this is inside of the sub two private facebook group but here's a zoom um if you ever wonder how to handle the debt to income ratio watch this zoom and start on hour three i break it down perfectly sub two paperwork and debt to income uh declaration so you guys can see, I just posted that yesterday. If you are a sub two student and you need to know exactly how a seller can buy another house, um, even though you bought the house subject to go in and watch that. It's a really perfect breakdown. Um, okay, cool. Um, a lot of people are saying they're watching it, watching both. I'm about to win that iPhone tonight. I love it. Um, okay, cool. Let's get some questions. Kimberly Williams, Cody, this one's you. All right. So wait. if we buy a property sub two, do we need a note 
between our company and the seller detailing how the payments will be made to their mortgage company. There are no equity payments to the seller. Do you need a note between our company and the seller detailing how the payments will be made? I mean, you don't need a note detailing how those payments are going to be made. Like if you're if you're purchasing a property subject to and you're not having a separate agreement to make them payments on the side, you just have your subject to paperwork where you're going to take that to your title company or attorney, depending on if you're a title or attorney state, and they're going to run all that paperwork when you close on it. You're either going to have a servicing company make sure that that payment's being made. That's going to be your paperwork for the servicing. Or if you don't do servicing, then you're just going to get the login for that seller's mortgage portal. And you're going to go in there and make the payments directly on there. Hopefully that answered the, the question. Uh, Kimberly says, Evergreen Servicing Company is saying that we need a note. Um, that might be a new thing. We use Evergreen and Weststar and a bunch of other companies. We've never had to create one. So it might be a new thing. Yeah, um, interesting. Cody, can we use a credit union for a gap lending? The answer is no. Yeah. And why any, is that? Any institution ain't going to do that. They are not. <laughs> What's I the mean, difference can... between an institution and a gap lender? Like why, why, why people don't understand the difference between a hard money lender and a private money lender. They think it's the same thing. Yeah. So a credit union, a bank, any types of banks or anything like that, they're going to want to get security in your property and be first lien, which some of that probably just like made some brains melt. Like what the first lien? So basically, there's a piece of paper that is signed by you and whoever gave you the money. And that that piece of paper is recorded at whatever county you live in saying, hey, we have an agreement that this fool owes me money. And until this money's paid off, this piece of paper says that they owe me money. And that's the lien essentially against the property. And so most institutions, most banks, they want that lien in first position, meaning they're the only lien there uh, against that property. Gap lenders are like your rich uncle, if you have one, like your dentist, like your lawyer or previous sellers that you've maybe bought their property cash and now they're in a windfall of cash and they're like, what do I do with this money? That those are where gap lenders typically come from um, are going to be just other individuals where they're OK to lend that money you know, to you for that property. And it's usually usually smaller amounts, um, usually not covering like the full purchase of a property, but just, you know, maybe renovation, maybe the down payment, things like that. Yeah, um, here's Yara. Yara right here is one of our gap lenders. She is she was a gap lender of ours and then she became a sub two student. Um, and then all of a sudden, all of the sub two students started using her. So she no longer wants to lend money to Cody and I. She doesn't love us as much as she loves the sub two students. Um, but Yara is a gap lender. She's an individual person that lends increments of money. She's not an institution. She doesn't have an office. She doesn't have a lending license. She's not, doesn't have employees. She's just a human being with money in her pocket. Okay. Um, do you recommend sub two insurance for beginners? Absolutely not. We do not um, recommend sub two insurance. I've talked about this a hundred different times. Um, you can get sub two insurance if you're uh, you're scared. If you're a scaredy cat, you can get sub two insurance. But Yara says you don't love me anymore. What are you talking about? I just gave you a shout out, Yara. You didn't get Yara. When was the last time you gave me a shout out on your podcast? <laughs> what what do you what do you think about that? Uh, Sherry says, maybe I'll be a gap lender. It's a great idea. Uh, Mauricio, Mario Garcia, why would you not use money that you have in sh for short-term financing and make that return on your parked money? Mario, I did a great YouTube video about this a couple months ago where I said, people who use their own money are have boring lives. And here's what I mean by that. You have no other opportunity except for a couple of fix and flips to put your money to, to work. I can make more money on my money than what I pay my lenders in their return. And the people who use their own cash and their own money for their deals means they have no opportunities other than what's directly in front of them to invest their money. Cody and I have multiple different opportunities to invest our money in other things that yield a greater return. So why the question really should be, why would I ever use my own money to do any deals? You, as a beginner, 
you think that that's a smart thing to do. Let me save up my money, use my own money to do my own deals. But the challenge is your velocity of your money, the power, the growth of your money is now watered down by utilizing your own capital. Using somebody else's capital and paying them interest actually makes you less, or makes you way more money than if you use your own capital. Isn't that a weird paradigm shift that you have to like get, Cody? Oh yeah, definitely. And and the thing is too, it's it's not to say Mario that we never do it. Like if if we're in between something that we're waiting on, or say for example, we have a hundred thousand dollars that we're going to be investing into something that's three or four months down the road, and it's already earmarked to be invested in that, we can go park that hundred grand in like a short term deal that we're doing internally just as we're waiting to place that money into the investment that we're going to be putting it into. So it's not to say we don't ever do that. It's just we're, we'll put it in so then we could take it out to then place it into another investment. But generally it just, it just depends. Right. Um, Alex Bishop, if you have a seller wants to sell in sub two, first step, step of setting up the paperwork is become a sub two student. And if you don't want to be a sub two student for whatever reason, then work with a sub two student. You're going to have a hard time finding an attorney. Or you're never going to get a title company that will draft sub two documents for that for you. You'll never find a title company that will draft agreements for you in any capacity. They will never draft an agreement for you on a purchase. They won't do it for realtors. They won't do it for, for wholesalers. And they definitely are not going to do it for creative finance. You need to find your own attorney, spend the money, educate them on what you're looking for, hope that they have experience with subject to and seller finance and pay them to do it and put that together or become a student or give a deal to a sub two student and learn how to do the paperwork from a, an existing sub two student. There you go. Um, let's see this. Do sub two docs work for all of the, do the, do sub two docs work for all of the U S yes. My, um, students or the sub two students have access to documents that work in all 50 States. Um, Cody, do you suggest title insurance on an owner carry deal? Oh, always title insurance. Always, 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 always title insurance. But there's got to be, there's got to be an exception to that rule where no. that somebody, somebody on YouTube teaches about this all the time. People see it on Propelio. This guy is on Propelio talking about don't use title insurance for years. Professed it. He's got, there's got to have some exception to this rule. I don't. I don't have any exception that I, I believe in. I would rather have the insurance and not need it than need it and not have it. End of the All day. All day long. Yeah. All it's like you don't long. need car insurance. You don't need it until you get pulled over by a cop or until you get in a car accident. So yeah, you don't need it. You don't need health insurance until the government makes you get it or you get, you know, a horrible condition. But Hey, what would you ever use your own money for? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> buying a title company, maybe investing in other businesses, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, there, there's a lot of other alternatives. I mean, we do buy some cryptocurrencies for, you know, to hold that, being able to, like Pace was saying, buy title companies, being able to put that capital into other businesses that were growing. Because we don't take on debt and equity partners and other companies that we're growing. We self-fund that stuff. So where do those yeah. funds come from? Our, Our biggest company companies. has zero funding partners. We've funded everything ourselves. Yep. I never really verbalized that out loud, but that's pretty impressive that we did that. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because um, like I was telling you on Friday Pace, that COO group that I just joined and just kind of seeing and, and pondering through like a lot of the different companies that are there, like took on all of these rounds of funding and, you know, giving away chunks of their companies, 10, 20, 30% of their companies just have capital to be able to grow their business. So that's where we take our funds is to keep equity and our other businesses. Um, we've got a deal right now. Matthew H um, says, Pace, how do you take over payments of judgments against the property subject to? We've done that multiple times. Air conditioning liens. Um, we have currently a deal in Arlington, Texas, where we're taking over a state tax lien, a judgment, a personal loan, 
and a mortgage all subject to, there will be four liens that we take over all subject to in Arlington, Texas. It's very simple. You just email the title company and you tell them, I want to take over all those liens and judgments, judgments. And the title company goes, wait, you want to do what? You go, yeah, you heard me make it happen. <laughs> and they go back to their underwriters and they go, can we, can he do this? And the underwriter <laughs> goes, yeah, technically, yeah, he can. Okay, great. I guess we're moving forward. Let's get it done. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a lot more intricate than that, but it would take a lot longer to explain to you, but it's very simple. Um, okay. Is my wife in here? Have you been seeing her, my wife make comments? I, I saw, uh, way earlier on. I don't know if she's still, still in here. Bless her and her freaking about to have a baby and any, any day. She's gangster, dude. She's gangster. Um, Jessica Bateman said something about, she had a conversation with somebody. I don't know what she was talking about. Anyway. Um, okay. So Jordan outlaw, I hope that's your real last name. That would be so sick. If you're working with somebody in your area and they want to offload corporate credit to you, cr cash credentials. Um, I'm, they I'm, wanna, I'm reading that as cold caller. I don't know. <laughs> oh, they want to offload cold call to you with a 10% fee on deal. Uh, any deal you bring. I am thinking about hiring a VA for this. Would you suggest otherwise? Jordan, I don't quite understand your question. Cody, do you understand it? I'm going to just take it as if they're, they're going to cold call for you and then they want like 10% of the deal if they get you a deal. Yes, do that. I'm just interpreting it as that just in case anyone else is like, should I have someone do that for me? Yes, do that uh, if that's the question. Uh, Jared Frank, I'm super smart um, guy out of... Uh, what part of Texas was he part of? I can't remember what part of Texas he was from. Um, BFE, Texas. He just moved to North Carolina. He's in Charlotte. Super smart, sub two student and TTP student. He says, title insurance is so freaking cheap. Why would anyone ever not get it? Cody, do you know why anybody would not get it? <laughs> the same reason that people don't pay for other insurance. They just don't want to pay for it. Yeah. They I mean, maybe that's smart. not always why. Yeah. Not going to happen to us. You know, there's a handful of people that teach this on YouTube and they, they're wrong. They're hundred percent wrong. I'm very sorry, but they are wrong. Um, okay. So he, Eli Goodman is saying credit card. I don't know exactly what the question was. I got to go back up to that. Okay. Pace. Thank you for what you do. I just wholesaled my first house for 32,000. I met Will Prosper Bam. in a free, free group. He helped me through the whole process. I'm excited. I can pay for the mentorship. Perfect. Are you sure you want to join the mentorship? Maybe you just keep working with William Prosper. Are you sure? So you you're saying it? that you can get help from people in the free group? Yes, you can. Wow. Um, closing costs. I don't know, man. Hopefully he comes back and gives us more context. Okay. Jason Daniel says, I'm a sub two student. My second week in, I'm already locking up a novation agreement. Amazing. Tasty. Um, I get so many wholesalers. I tease Brent Daniels about this because he's like, shouldn't start with creative finance. You should start with wholesaling. And then I get a student, Dante Smith, that comes in the other day and goes, I've been trying to wholesale for months and months and months and months and months. I join your mentorship. And two days later, I, I'm wholesaling a novation agreement. I go, do you even realize that the majority of wholesalers have no idea if you're even speaking English when you say I wholesaled a novation agreement? It's so foreign to them that that's even an opportunity. <laughs> it's crazy. Um. Janelle says, okay, well, he told me what the mentorship offers. I can join and work with him. Okay. All right. If you, if you think that the mentorship's dope, then feel free for that. Um, where's the free group at Jose Barrera, Cody, where's the free group at? Oh, she, I mean, go on Facebook, type in creative finance with Pace Morby and you'll find it. I'll post a link in the description though. Just, just hang tight a sec guys. And I'll, uh, I'll get a, I'll get a link posted in there. And if you're not in there, what are you doing? I mean, that, there's a lot of different Facebook groups for real estate on Facebook, but I don't think there's any gr group and I, maybe I'm biased, but I don't think there's any free group that has as much value as this group does and as much engagement either. It's like freaking ghost towns in most of these other groups. Ooh, Cody, this is a good one. Kama High and Tristan, some of our favorite people. Will you read this one for us? Yeah, I was just grabbing the link. Uh, da, 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 da. So, question is, will, will oh, you, you go ahead? Go ahead. So, will you turn down a deal, a really good deal, when the title company won't provide title insurance because there is a break in title? 
It depends. It depends. What's that like? What what's the, what the situation is? Honestly, I mean, I would try to bring it to another title company and see if someone else would insure it, or if they would insure it. I would say know, no. I'd walk away from the deal. I would still just I'm try too- to keep figuring out how to get them to fix it. Or I wholesale it to a wholesaler to a stupider person. Yeah, there's that. You could do that. I wholesale too. It to a bigger idiot. Um, here's a good question. Partnerships. How do you and Cody decide who gets a property when you individually buy them versus how you decide on properties you buy together? First and foremost, we don't count each other's money. We're not little bitches. Secondly, I'm older than Cody. So I had income and, and revenue and all sorts of things. 13 years before Cody even had his driver's license, I, I was making money. Okay. So Cody and I have different lifestyles right now. Cody will become a billionaire in the next 10 years. There's no doubt about it in my mind. But I, uh, a couple of years ago, I would tell Cody, hey, I want to go buy this property and we're partners. So I want to let you know, this is what I want to go do. And he says, I don't want to be part of that type of business strategy. Not interested. Hey, Cody, I want to go um, do mobile home parks. He goes, not interested right now, maybe in a year. So I bring the opportunity to Cody. He has the opportunity to turn it down. And then I go off and do my investment without Cody. And that's how easy it is. Same thing with Cody. Cody owns a handful of properties without me. Um, sometimes it's like, hey, I want to take this for one for myself. In fact, Cody just bought another house for himself from our deal flow. And that's why you have a real estate business. You have a real estate business. So one of the partners in the business go, hey, I want that house, right? And you can take the house. I think Matt just bought some ranch yeah. or something from yeah. right? Yeah. Some yeah, Matt, Matt got there. his... Yeah. Yeah. You got an acre and a quarter in Queen Creek. Good, good house. And it'll be great once it's all remodeled. But I mean, yeah, that's why we do this. I mean, not, yes. And I saw someone ask, is, am I in the new house? I am finally moved in. And this is the first time streaming Sunday service here. I will have a better background, but I just wanted to at least be on and, and be here. So, um, but yes, that's, that's part of having the what, business. What kind of, what have kind of things have you guys been doing in that house over there? I mean, remodeling it or what? Like what stuff? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you guys been in there, been in there long enough to um, get deals done, lay down some deals. <laughs> Always laying <laughs> on deals. <laughs> um, okay. So I want to give away an iPhone tonight and we have seven minutes until that happens. Okay. There's a lot of iPhone users in here that are like, I already have an iPhone. Give a, give a, give away something else. Give away an iPad. Give away something else. Eli Goodman, get your head out. Get your head out of the gutter, bro. It's where my head lives. What are you talking about? That's you that's paces code. like mode of oper- what modus operate. What what's the word? Mode, no, that's just, um, mode of. I don't know. Oper- yeah, it's where his head's always at. That's yeah. yeah. There we go. Easy easy words. <laughs> Um, okay. So Giancarlo says, Pace, your operating agreement was awesome. My partner and I sent um, me his. I had to break it to him that we were using yours. My attorney agreed as well. Well, we had a, Cody and I had an attorney draft our operating agreement. And um, let's see, for anybody that's a sub two student, let me put that in there so you guys can see. Um, we just gave away a our four. How much do you think we've spent in um, our operating agreements over the years? I don't know. I mean, we spend at least 60 to 80 grand a year on attorney fees every year, just every year. So a good amount <laughs> for sure. Okay. Hold on. This one's a good one. Um, let me share this with you guys. I got a student that was like, Hey, I'm partnering with somebody. I need an operating agreement. I was like, please make sure you have a dating period. Cody and I had a really good dating period. Um, do not partner until you had a successful dating period. Um, and then I gave you guys a Zoom or a Dropbox link and a Loom. Look at me. Look at my ugly face. It was like four o'clock in the morning. And oh I made my a God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here's the Dropbox link for a partnership agreement. Um, really, Cody, do we have any partnership agreements or is it just operating agreements? Um, I mean, we have buy, sell, operating agreement. Um, we don't have... I think we don't have like a specific just like partnership agreement, but we just have our operating agreements and our buy sell agreements together. Correct. So guys, operating agreements are partnership agreements and you just got to make sure your operating agreement is straight up fire. 
Uh, Cody, Matt and I use Sean St. Clair here locally to draft all of our documents. And um, if you are a sub two student, that one set of documents probably has cost uh, $6,000, $7,000. We give that to you to cut your cost. Obviously, you're going to have to edit them and adjust them accordingly, but the framework is already built out for you. That alone, it, man, we've spent a lot of money on documents, tons of money. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Jordan Outlaw. Sorry, I would get 10% of any deal. Okay, we're, we're talking about something else. So, all right, Sam Singh, Cody Barton. What are we thinking? How do we, how do we give away an iPhone right now? Oh gosh. Um, I feel like something. Here's what we're going to do. I already know what we're going to do. I want to have everybody take screenshots of their screen and I want them to take, we're going to take a couple of minutes. We're going to answer some questions and I'm going to randomly go through everybody that screenshots and post it on Instagram stories, Sunday service, Sunday service, Sunday service, whatever tags, Cody and myself. And you have to be YouTube. following both of us on Instagram and YouTube, and we will check. Yes. Um, D Doritos, does Pace's attorney work with other sub two <laughs> students too? Well, yeah, Doritos, Sean St. Clair is the attorney for the mentorship. He drafts all the documents. I mean, he's in, con he's constantly dra drafting new documents for the sub two students. Yes. All the time. Um, Pace definitely needs to be sponsored by Apple. Yes, that is true. Um, okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to randomly, in three minutes, I'm going to randomly go through my IG DMs. My IG DMs tell me who has tagged me and posted. I want you to tag Cody, tag Pace, and um, put in Sunday service, and we're going to randomly go through and select. I don't care if you're an iPhone user. If you're an iPhone user, take the iPhone, give it away to somebody in your local give, area. Give your old iPhone to a Droid user and keep the new one for yourself. Cody, um... Are we doing another zero to hero this year? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. We want to do one. I think in, we're talking to Matt about March or April and we're talking about, we were originally thinking February, but we had to change a few things up. I think we're going to end up doing it in March or April this year. And we're going to make it a big one. We're going to call it hometown heroes um, where we're going to show you guys how to go on appointments, do all the things, start from scratch, start from zero. It's going to be amazing. Zero to Hero last year was fire. By the way, um, the I just bought that deal from Aaron Moore up in Utah that yeah. utilizing the Morby method that um, myinvestorloan.com got mad at me for touting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. They're mad at me. Um, we'll figure it out. Cody's like, oh my gosh, kill me. So that deal, where do you know where that lead came from? Aaron doing something. Driving for deals. That last driving for deals challenge we had from a couple months ago. Zero to hero season two. People are still getting deals from that a couple months later. That's awesome. It's freaking dope. Freaking dope. Um, okay. I wonder if Cody knows the answer to this. Cody, can you can you wholesale a deal to Cody and I for exchange for any of our mentorships or our classes? Yes. I'm just going to say yes. The answer is hell no. If it's a good enough deal, I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That's good. Okay, cool. Um, any other interest-free creative strategies other than seller finance? Unless banks are giving out 0% money. Zero interest creative finance strategies other than seller finance. I think in Denmark, they have re negative interest rates. I don't know if it's still happening, but... That's insane. Are you serious? Yeah, I was hearing something about that. All right. When governments are printing money, interest rates get wonky. So right, we I'm got gonna... a couple minutes to see who's going to... So everyone, so they, the person has to have... Subscribe to you on YouTube, to my YouTube, and then follow both of us on Instagram. Right? Or what What, what right. were all the things? You have to be following both Cody and I, Cody Barton. I think it's something like 
Long Long Dong Co- Cody Barton, I think is his Instagram name. <laughs> or is it Cody Barton official or official Co- Cody Barton? Uh, Cody Barton official because I tried to buy my name from the person that has Cody Barton and he's he's like, I'll sell it to you for a hundred grand. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Freaking butthole. Uh, v Magnus says zero to hero sub two version would be awesome. Yeah, we, um, we're currently doing that right now. Basically the, the Lonza method on Saturdays with Doug Lonza, that's basically zero to hero. You guys are going through weekend trainings with uncle Lonza every other weekend. That's basically zero to hero style. Um, Cody, here you go. Here's a good question. Actually, let me answer this one real quick. Take it. Um, it depends on the deal. There you go. Um, the answer is we replace the insurance typically 30 days after the sub two deal has uh, recorded to the new buyer, which would be us. We replace the insurance with a new insurance policy. Um, were you supposed to be coming to sub two in Baltimore, Maryland? What happened? Um, I freaking love Baltimore, Maryland, but we just got busy with the TV show, unfortunately. Uh, check this out. Medium Wave Dave, who I just sent me an email saying he's going to hire like two more VAs here soon. He says zero to hero season one was when I finally hired my first two virtual assistants. Shout out startvirtual.com. Then anyway, this is a shameless plug. Uh, startvirtual.com. If you guys are looking for virtual assistants is a company that that's the company we use. That's who medium wave Dave uses. They're on unbelievable. Cole black says, talk to us about the Morby method. Cole Black, I talked about the Morby method for two and a half hours today. <laughs> I did it in my private um, sub two mentorship this morning from 10 o'clock to 1230. It was unbelievable. I had several hundred people show up to that. Um, if you are a sub two student, go back and watch that recording. It's fire. Um, all right. People keep asking us how we've met. They're like, how did we end up working together? I feel like we have to do a, another Sunday service where we talk about the history of Sunday service. Again, <laughs> I think that's a great idea. In fact, we should we could talk about that next week. Um, okay, we got we're past the time. You want you ready for me to choose somebody? Um, yes. All right, send it. We got to see because I I got to see that there. I'm gonna be I'm gonna go check the channels and check on Instagram. Post your, I mean, if the, a lot of people are probably watching on your YouTube, so I imagine if you're watching this on Pace's YouTube right now and you aren't subscribed to Pace's YouTube, you're like Fire. the person that goes into like an ice cream shop, doesn't buy any ice cream, but just eats all the samples and like walks out. Yes. Okay, here I go. I'm, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling up and down, up and down. You guys can see this right now. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. <laughs> I am going to select Sam Singh. Sam Singh is the winner of the iPhone. We will be buying Sam Singh. You get to choose your own color. I'll let you even choose your own color. iPhone 13 Pro, whatever it is, bro. Probably going to end up costing us a good $1,200 for that iPhone. Sam Singh, you are the winner of the iPhone. Um, boom. There you go, dog. Hopefully that makes you happy. Actually, what's funny is I saw a bunch of people in the side chat saying, give it to Sam Singh because we're sick of his crappy Android bubbles. Sam oh, Singh. He is, he is following. He's following too. So just was checking. Love it. Love it. Love it. Sam Singh wants a Samsung 24K <laughs> gold. Um, Sam Singh, you t- send me a text message, bro. We'll get you set up. We'll, we'll send it. We'll order it. Jared Frankham says, Pace, do a second one. Jared. <laughs> Um, I, we are going to do a second one next week. What we're going to do is we're going to give a, away another iPhone. Okay. But we're going to come up with something different as a contest. Okay. What I want to make sure next week, you guys all show up. If, um, how should we give away an iPhone next week on Sunday service? I don't know. I feel like it's gotta be, there has to be. How about the greatest, hit. the most, cha- how about the stump, how we get somebody to stump us? No? I don't know. I feel Ooh. like we have to hit, I feel like we have to hit a certain amount of people I got watching. A good one. I, got I feel a like good we have one. to hit a certain amount of people watching. 
I got a good one. This one's great. All right. All right. Okay. Um, this one's a great one. We more, do. Uh, no. We do. We have more. We have enough deals, dog. My wife is so sexy. Nine months pregnant, still going on dates, still getting laid. It's great. Life is good. <laughs> um, my wife says no. Come on, babe. <laughs> Thought you love me. All right, so here's the, here's what we're gonna do next week. Okay, we're gonna have go to the Facebook group, go to the free creative finance with Pace Morby Facebook group. Okay, and we are going to take and give away a. Um, here's what we're gonna do. Who this is good. We're gonna give away two iPhones next week. How about that? Two iPhones next week. Oh my gosh, Cody's like. He doesn't know this is coming from his paycheck, but it is coming from his paycheck. So we're going to give away two iPhones next week. And both of them are going to be first and second place for who invites the most people to our Facebook group. Okay. You see, guys, we're at 39,900 members in the free Facebook group. Okay. And I want you guys to go in there. I want you to make a post. Here's, here's, here's the thing. There's two things you have to do. One. You have to invite the most people to the Facebook group. And then two, you have to have made um, three posts throughout the week asking questions or helping somebody else out. Okay. Pretty simple. Whoever gets first place gets an iPhone. Person gets second place. So we're not going to like judge it between a couple. There's always somebody that blows it out of the water, right? We had somebody last year that like, invited 1800 people to the Facebook group or something. And then the second runner up was like 300 people. So you're always going to get somebody that blows it out of the water. We're going to give them an iPhone. We're going to give a second runner up an iPhone as well. Next week, Sunday service, giving away two iPhones to the person who invites the most people to our free creative finance Facebook group. And uh, we want more people to join there. So we have more people to, for you guys to JV with. The link is in the side chat. And um, what should our topic for Sunday service ne be next week, Cody? I mean, I definitely think we should talk about the history of Sunday service a little bit because I feel like there's so many new people watching and I'm like, well, you don't know that? How do you not know that stuff? I mean, some, some of that, but then, and then transition into, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? I know, I know what we're going to do. We're going to do the um, history of Sunday service followed by the top 10 most important things to know about creative finance. The top most questions like do on sale, debt to income ratio, how to make payments. We're going to come up with the top 10 questions that everybody asks us over and over and over and over and over so that when somebody's like, Hey, I have a question about this. We just send them a link to that YouTube channel, that YouTube video over and over and over and over. All right. <laughs> Ooh, Sam Singh says, I continue to be blessed by Pace and my community. Love you all. Absolutely. How about selling a sub two deal? We, we'll get to that probably in September of this year. Because <laughs> we're trying to go in chronological sequential order. Okay. Um, yeah, Tech, Nino, we have uh, three women that uh, manage that Facebook group. We don't need face, uh, fake accounts. We actually don't allow fake accounts in as to the best of our, of our ability. Sometimes they sneak through, but for the most part, our girls do a really, really good job. Okay. Um, all right, Cody, you got any last words for Sunday service? Man, this week, everybody, I hope you have an amazing week. Hope you had a great weekend. Get out there, crush it. Whatever you're thinking about that you need to do in your business that you've been procrastinating on, just get out there, get it done, get it done the first uh, you can beginning of the week so you can stop procrastinating. And if you didn't know, Sunday service is on iTunes and on Spotify, so you can check us out on there. And if you're not already in the creative finance with face, uh, Pace Morby Facebook group, make sure to jump into the group. We'll see you guys next week. Later, guys. Oh.